Did you cut yourself? Well, a Band-Aid might be just the thing you need. But what if you've got a bigger injury? One little Band-Aid won't be enough. Bond-Aids, for when Band-Aids aren't big enough. In today's video, we're going to see if it's possible to make the world's largest Band-Aid bandage. Guys, band-aids are a staple in my workshops. We've got a bunch here, I've got some at home. Not always the brand, I don't really care what brand. I do happen to get band-aids sometimes just because I think they work well. But we sometimes like to build things bigger here on the channel and I thought it would be really funny if we made a band-aid that was a lot bigger. So what we're gonna try and do is scale up all the dimensions of this band-aid so it's 10 times bigger, 10 times longer, 10 times wider, 10 times thicker approximately. And just generally we're going for 1,000 times the volume of a regular Band-Aid. So to get started, I went to the fabric store and I got this roll of vinyl. We're going to use this as like the main Band-Aid strip part. So let's take a look at the normal size Band-Aid and see what it is we need to replicate. First, you can see we have this outer paper coating. We've got two layers of paper, they peel apart, then we have the bandage itself, which has these two tabs on it stuck to the adhesive. Those tabs peel off. We've got a gauze pad here in the middle. That's for absorbing any blood. And it's got some texture to it. Now it's got like a hexagon pattern in it. I don't know that we'll go so far as getting all of that hexagon weave, but I do think we'll try and add some texture to ours. We've got the sticky pads hold the Band-Aid on and just the fabric of the bandage itself. Fantastic. Ah! So what I want to start with is the main body of the bandage. And like I said, we've got this tan colored vinyl. We've got way more of it than we need here, but that's better to have too much than not enough. Let's take some measurements. All right, that lines up to be pretty much exactly three inches long. That's pretty good. So we've got three inches long and then we've got pretty much exactly three quarters of an inch wide times 10, which means we're going to go for 30 inches long and instead of 0.75 inches wide, it's going to be 7.5 inches wide. The curve shape, it's just a gentle curve. There's no flat part, it just goes from one side to the other all in one continuous sort of loop. Got a curve in there. It's not 100% perfect, but I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna cut that one off, cut this down, and then fold it to the other side so the curves match. I am very happy with this. This already looks just kind of like a giant Band-Aid. There's no pad in it, which I think will change like the surface texture a little bit. Like you can see the bumps of where the gauze is. But shape-wise, I'm already loving this. I think it looks fantastic. So let's move on. Speaking of the gauze pad, what I've got is some white cotton batting. This is the kind of stuff that you would put inside of a quilt. And I made sure to get some stuff that's just almost 100% cotton. It's got a little bit of polypropylene, but uh, I figured that would be more absorbent. You know, for a good gauze pad on a Band-Aid, you want some absorption. I think we're gonna be using several layers of this to get a good thickness. I kinda wanna use it like that thick. I think that looks pretty good. But to make this look a little bit more like our pad, uh, we're not just gonna have the stacks of cloth. I'm actually gonna do some sewing, sewing right on top of these to add a little bit of texture and pattern to it. What I think will happen is I'll just take this full width the way it is right now. I'll add the stitching into it. I'll cut it to about the right length, cut it a little too long, the eight and one eighth of an inch. I'll add a little bit extra, maybe go to nine or so inches. Then I'll go in with the stitches on top and then I'll trim down the sides to get it to all just the right size. I am now ready, I believe, to start sewing my batting line, my padding lines into the batting. This is batting, I'm using this padding. Here goes. This is definitely thicker than it's really designed to be used, but it's really soft, so I'm hoping it won't really cause any problems. Give myself some gentle guidelines to work with. All right, got several lines to do. Let's stitch them all up. Look at that quilting, that is Beautiful. All right, now I need to cut it down to size and that will go ahead and take care of all of these extra threads on the side for me. Not a big sewing project, but a little bit. Um, guys, if you don't know how to sew, 
Honestly, it is one of the most useful life skills I know of. Like, it is absolutely worth learning how to do a little bit. YouTube is full of amazing tutorials on learning how to sew, like whole classes and courses that weren't available 20, 30 years ago without signing up for like fancy expensive classes. You can just go and people just teach you how to do all this. It will definitely benefit your life. You can start out with a cheapo little sewing machine that doesn't have a lot of capabilities. It's still gonna be able to do a lot for you, worth looking into. Now, for anyone out there who's familiar with sewing, yes, what I'm doing right now, I mean, I didn't backstitch anyway, but what I'm doing right now would cut off any backstitching that I had done. So all of the stitching that I've now put in, if it were on clothing, would just come undone eventually. There's nothing holding the thread from just slowly unwinding, except a little bit of friction. And that's not gonna work in the long run. However, this is a Band-Aid, not an article of clothing, so I'm okay with that. So this vinyl, well, I do like the general look of it. The inside is this grayish color, not quite the look I'm going for. So we are going to take just some spray paint and turn it a little bit more of an almond shade. It's not going to be exactly the shade of the outside, but that's okay. We're gonna say that the adhesive changes the color a little bit. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna paint the two sides of the Band-Aid so that the color matches a little bit better. Now we want to attach our cotton pad right here. So I'm gonna try using super glue for this because super glue reacts chemically with cotton. So I think that will form a pretty good bond once it activates. One thing I do want to do though, is I want that sort of crease on the back that we saw. You know, we, we look at this band-aid, we can sort of see the crease on there. So I want the edges of this band-aid crease in and I'm gonna add a little bit more glue to try and get it to stay there. But next it's time to go for the sticky part of the band-aid, what makes it stick. We're gonna try actually a couple things. These are some adhesive mounting sheets. It's basically a full sheet of sticker or double-sided tape, sticker paper or double-sided tape. Each one should be big enough. There we go. Yeah, so I have to cut it down. I think we'll stick one side on, flip it over, cut off the extra, and then peel. Now these sheets are sticky on both sides, but I want it to stick a little bit to the, you know, the outside, and I want it to stick really, really well to the bandage side. You know, when you when you stick this on something and pull it, it comes off your hand. It doesn't come off, like the, the stickiness doesn't come off of the bandage itself. So we're going to add a little bit of this spray adhesive to the vinyl first and then stick our sticky sheet down onto that. Hopefully that'll give it an extra strong hold on the vinyl and a less strong hold on the adhesive sheet. Right now we've still got the adhesive mostly covered. You can see it here. It's still got like this protective wax paper on and the real Band-Aids have tabs similar to those. However, they overlap the pad. These ones that are on here right now don't. So we're gonna try and make some bigger ones that actually overlap somewhat proportionally to the the regular banded size. To do that, we're going to be using freezer paper. You may remember freezer paper. We've used it in a project before when we did the bleach t-shirts. Um, half of it is just regular paper and the other side has like a waxed paper substance on it. And uh, it doesn't stick quite as much to sticky things most of the time. So this is what we're gonna be using. So I'm just gonna trace it out to about the right size. Liking that, we're gonna have just a bit of overlap. Oh, I'm excited. Look how well this is coming together. Look at our giant Band-Aid. Look at it. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Well, this is looking excellent. Band-Aids do not come just loose like this in the box. We're not making the box. We're just making the whole Band-Aid, but our Band-Aid needs a wrapper. We've got something for this. Aha! Giant Band-Aid wrapper. All right, so for legal reasons, getting this printed, they wouldn't print it if it was actually all of the actual imaging. So we had to change this to Bond Aid made by Bonson and Bonson. I get it. Print shops don't want to get in trouble for printing trademarks and things that belong to other people. But this wrapper should be the same 10 times scale that we have for our other band-aids. As you can see on a regular band-aid, there is quite a bit of space on the sides. So I have this one printed side and then I've just got some extra paper for the non-printed side. We're gonna cut it out to the same size and then try and use not terribly strong glue to hold it all together so that we can peel it apart. Our giant Band-Aid. This is 
10 times the length, it is 10 times the width, and it should be eh, approximately 10 times the thickness. I wasn't super careful measuring out the cotton batting for the pad, but we've got the wrapper, we've got the little tabs that pull off, and we should have a sticky band-aid with a gauze pad in the middle of it. I am very happy with how this is looking. It has turned out excellent. You can see our band-aid inside the wrapper. I think we have to test if everything works. See if our peeling open works. If it doesn't and the paper just tears, uh, that's not my ideal, but I have had real Band-Aid packages that tore open instead of just peeling nicely, so. Yes, look at that peeling. It's just like a real Band-Aid. Ah, perfect. The giant Band-Aid. Oh, I need to go put my giant wound shirt back on. If I'm gonna be testing a giant Band-Aid, I need a giant injury. All right. Oh, I've got a cannonball wound. I'm gonna try a regular size Band-Aid. I don't think that's big enough. I need a bigger Band-Aid. Ha ha ha, sticky pulls off. Now I take my giant Band-Aid. Oh, there we go, it's a whole torso Band-Aid. Oh, that's much better. Oh, look at that, look how well that covers my cannonball wound. Oh, I should put some cannonball wound ointment on it. It's all right. Oh, all bandaged up. Look at that. World's biggest band-aid. 1,000 times the size of a regular band-aid. I have no idea if this band-aid is going to pull off of my shirt or if it's just here forever now. Oh, it does. Nice. Ugh. I love it. I love it. World's biggest band-aid. You just see that and you're like, oh, it looks like a band-aid. Just enormous. Yeah, they're band-aids. There we go. That's the right spot, right? Guys, that's it for today. But you know we've always got more for you to see. Click the box at the top to check out our most recent video. And we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.